You know, I want to start off with your child, your childhood. How did you get involved with music? What was your musical training like? What was life like for you growing up as a young musician? Oh, well, you know, it's funny. I, I, I started playing. I, I've told this story a thousand times. Um, I, I, I had just started playing the piano. I, I wasn't that young. I was seven years old. And um, I was um, homesick from school. I was I was home for a for an entire week. And um, I had just started piano, just you know, kind of gotten my foot in the water and, and sort of was playing things like the theme from Gigi, you know, that was popular stuff. We had a, I had a you know, local piano teacher, the guy from the elementary school. And, and, and it was, you know, charting a course for, uh, for me, for mediocrity, you know, I was ready to just kind of be one of these kids who plays piano. And 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 that night week, there used to be a um, a, a a a program in New York uh, that that played every day for a week called the Million Dollar Movie. Every week, Channel Nine would uh, it was either nine or eleven would have a different. Um, a different, they play a different movie and they play it twice a day for an entire week and all, and, and run it continuously along uh, on the weekend. Dan probably knows about this. And, and, and this particular uh, week that I was home from school, they were showing an old biography of Chopin, a, a Hollywood biopic, you know, uh, to, to completely fictionalized with uh, Cornell Wilde and, and Merle Oberon. I saw the movie and I, I and, 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 and I was kind of just electrified, you know, this is it, this is it for me. Mm -hmm. That music just kind of, uh, it, it blew me away. And, and I did nothing, nothing but uh, gravitate to Chopin. And, and um, I watched every single showing of the movie, you know, and, and, and which meant that I was all, all weekend watching the movie, memorized it. And um, that was it. I caught fire from then on. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be a pianist and I wanted to play Chopin. And um, I would, how, you know, how, old were you, how old were you then, roughly? I would with my sleeves. I would play the piano like, you know, with my sleeves open to make it, make it look like ruffled, ruffled, ruffled sleeves. <laughs> but the... Um, but that that was pretty much the start of the uh, of the whole thing. And roughly, how old were you when when you saw that movie? I was seven. Oh, oh in your first year of playing, you saw that movie. Yeah. So, yeah. And during your first year of playing, you saw that movie. Oh, first couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh wow, it's amazing yeah. how how that film played by ear. You know, I played all those things that I heard in the movie. I tried to get you know uh, music that was some somewhat I cobbed together things, you know, uh, mazurkas, whatever. It was horrible. I mean, I sounded, I sounded dreadful, but, um, but, it, but, but, but I was having a really good time and it uh -huh. beat, beat the theme from Gigi. Um, and and what, 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 what were, who were some of your early teachers uh, as a child and as a teenager? What, tell us about your studies. Who were you studying with? Well, I never had a really good teacher. Um, I, I, I had that local guy for about a year and then um, I took an audition um, at, uh, and got into uh, the prep, the, 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 pre the preparatory division at Juilliard, but my mother didn't want to take me into the city every week. So mm. she sort of, we, we were living on Long Island and she uh, contacted this uh, piano teacher uh, who was a, um, uh, a guy in Hicksville, Long Island, and he had quite a reputation. As a matter of fact, that they, they know he was most notable for being the teacher of Billy Joel. Oh. Um, and Billy Joel and I took lessons at the same time with him. Really? But, he, you know, he, again, it was just a, a, a sea of bad habits. And, and until about 16 years, uh, years of age, I, um, I studied with him and, and almost, uh, became unable to play I, my arms was aching you know I had so much tension in my arms and um it was very undisciplined the way I the way I played and, and what uh, happened at age 16 is that when you started yeah what happened at age 16 you started going into the city 
I made, I went to another teacher. Her name was Rosetta Goodkind. And oh, she, Rosetta. She kind of straightened me out a little bit and taught me how to kind of relax my arm. <coughs> um, she, she was a, a good teacher. And then um, I, I took, yeah, I, then I, I um, won a competition in New York at WQXR. And then I kind of gravitated to, finally went, went to Juilliard and, and uh, I studied with uh, Sasha Gordonitsky there, uh, who was a very, very um, a famous teacher and mm -hmm. um, had a great class. And, uh, and tell us about your time at Juilliard. What was that like? The time at Juilliard was fine. I loved Juilliard in, in a way because I loved I loved the people there. I loved the I loved the kids and I uh, the, 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 I, I met so many great people uh, who who I still know and um, you know real characters. Uh, people like Bill Wolfram. You know Bill. Oh yeah. A wonderful wonderful guy and 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 and, and a friend of of mine, uh, Jim Barbagallo, was my best friend there. He's since passed, unfortunately. Um, hmm. But he, he was a great, great friend, and I just I loved being with the with, with, on the fourth floor. We we had a we had a great time, you know. The fourth floor is where everybody practiced. Yeah, and um, you know, aside aside from what people say about Juilliard, I don't know what it's like now, but at that time it was pretty. It was it was really fun. Now hmm. I did not think I got. I did not think Gordonitsky was a good teacher for me. Mm -hmm. Um, he was a, um, a kind of, uh, rank and, you know, um, nuts and bolts kind of guy. He was a very competent pianist, a uh, famous pianist, but, you know, wasn't, he and I never, never really saw eye to eye. Right. Right. It wasn't that we didn't see eye to eye. I mean, I liked him personally very much. I think we got along, but, um, the kind of music that I wanted to play was not his taste. Uh, I liked at that point, I had sort of morphed into a, a, a player more interested in um, the German, uh, mm -hmm. which is Beethoven, Schubert, and um, Gordonetsky was, you know, you got to learn the Tchaikovsky concerto and the Rachmaninoff concertos and that. Uh -huh. I don't like that kind of, I don't like that music at all. Uh -huh. So it's hard to kind of, rec you, know, you know, reconcile with being with a teacher that wanted me to go in a different direction. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, the reason uh, it was an interesting thing about that, what, what, what came up of, uh, what it was, was that I got really good at playing Mozart. Mm. It was like Mozart became a, an obsession with me because I could go to my lessons and play Mozart and Joe uh, Gordonsky didn't care at all about Mozart. Uh, so I could play Mozart to the day, you know, Till the cows came home and he would basically not say anything and that's what i was trying to try i was trying to go for not the most constructive um yeah you, <laughs> you know approach to lessons did you stay with him throughout your time at juilliard or did you have other teachers as well i then uh yeah i had a, subsequently i had a great teacher um after i got out of juilliard i studied with um uh, Irma Volpe. Now she huh. was quite a character. She was this woman. Who, she was the um, Volpe might me mean something. Uh, he uh, she was the widow of Stefan Volpe, who was one of the greatest uh, twelve tone composers in, mm -hmm. uh, in 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 Vienna. And 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 Irma had kind of a wild history. And and she was um, a bit of a um, a bit of a. Uh, a rogue uh, a little bit you know I, I don't mean to sound like sarah palin but what what did you um get, gain from studying with her what what, what do you remember from uh, those lessons she had very unique ways of doing things you know and 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 i played for her i met her and and and, and i played for her and she said to me you know dear your playing is very good but you're so middle of the road hmm. and that middle of the road was you know that was pretty much what Gordonitsky wanted. His huh. mantra to me was, don't do anything controversial. You'll irritate the people on your jury. Huh. Uh, you, you know, your 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 the teachers on the jury. Right. right. Safe. And you know, uh, you know, that was not Irma's way. 
right you right know, i would go see her almost every day and then she'd have these wonderful soirees in the evening where she'd invite all these kind of kooky people and, and and i got into a whole different world and i saw music in a completely different way after that you know how so but of um and what would home and then and then I, uh, after I had won this competition down in, in Atlanta, um, and I got a letter from a woman named uh, Olga Barabini, who was a, um, a, a piano teacher. And she, had in, she invited me to come play for her. And I did, and, 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 and she was quite good. And, but, but the thing about her, she, she was very good friends with Claudio Rao. So she introduced me to him and I played for him uh, oh. it's not not really as a student but um i did you know well, yeah well, what was that like uh what was it like he's one of the legends of the 20th century but one of the greatest and he was yeah. always one of my greatest favorite pianists of course yeah gordon is did not like him and what um, what was the what were your what were your i don't know if they call them lessons lessons or sessions with him like sessions and we'd speak talk about music and he would talk about Jung. he was very 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 interested in uh Jungian analysis you know and he would often talk about um the um he would use love to use the word um counterintuitive he'd say it's counterintuitive at the moment and he would talk about you know being kind of being loose at the piano and he had this thing about that 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 your soul kind of goes through your body you know um and 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 if you are in any way tense or 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 or, or constricting that you're not just making it more difficult to play the piano but you're actually and he'd go like this and say he'd you'd be cutting off your soul right here you know and 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 it was it, it was enlightening really you know i never he was so you know i, I mean i borrow a, a you know a happy phrase but he was so spiritual you know he saw music as a kind of a, um um hard to put into words a larger vision let's put it that way you know i do want to talk later about some of your favorite pianists but since you've mentioned claudio around what did you love about his playing um the integrity of it you know the integrity of it the 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 uh, absolute adherence to um what was important in the music he never showed off you know he was consumed with being kind of a vessel for the for the uh, composer, and um, he was just um, 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 music for him. It started at a different point from most most pianists, you know. Mm. Uh, but most pianos they got the they got the job done with claudio rao is just beginning you know and and the depth of his playing was 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 just um yeah it was startling really and who, who and some of the sound and then mm. the me measured tempos and he was unique, he was mm. unique. Who, who are some of the other pianists that come to mind from say the mid mid to late 20th century that you admire one really one, 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 one big fan of when i when i was young um and and he was is really the polar opposite of, of claudio rao was um arthur rubinstein and 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 rubinstein was great because if you listening to his recordings now um it's not you you have no idea you can't tell what what an immense artist he was, you know. Um, Rubinstein actually didn't know how to record. Um, when you when you record, you know, you record to the microphone. You have to kind of make smaller gestures, you know. Um, the great example would be uh, Bing Crosby as a singer. I don't know if anybody knows who that is even anymore. But uh, the thing that was great about Bing Crosby, as opposed to, to singers. Or, you know, you listen to singers from the 1920s, 
Al Jolson and you know Ethel Merman. They they sound kind of foolish on recordings because they are singing out there, you know, like they're doing for fifty thousand people, right? But Bing Crosby knew how to really speak to the microphone, and it was a small kind of approach, conversational. Well, Rubenstein was all about playing for the hall, not in a crass way at all. I mean, but. But his gestures were big, his sound was big. When you heard it up close, it was actually kind of thumpy. Did, did, did you ever hear him play in person? What's that? Did you ever hear him perform live? Oh, many, many times. Many, many times. Oh. Uh, we would go down, sometimes we would go down at Juilliard Kids, we'd just go down to Carnegie Hall, we'd wait till the end of his concerts and we'd get in for free and just listen to the encores because he'd always play about seven or eight encores. And that was the most fun part of the concert, you know? And mm. the way he, the guy, the man could walk out on stage and just make a place explode. He was, he was truly a grand artist, you know? Um, much, 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 much different from a Ralph. But I loved him. I loved the way yeah. he played. He made a lot of mistakes and he played, you know, uh, it was every performance had, you know, six or seven memory slips, but it didn't matter. He was making music. He was giving mm. love, you know? And that's yeah. that it, it's amazing. fascinating how you can be influenced by people who are much different from each other and, and love them both. And yeah, that's the thing. Well, that makes, you know, you've got to be a little more flesh. You've got to be very kind of fleshed out, you know? There's a... And I know, I know at some point you developed a, a love of jazz. Was that in your teen years? I did. I, in high school, I loved jazz. And um, I actually got very serious about it. And... Um, I met um, on Long Island. I was out in Long Island. I was living in Long Island. And uh, at that time, in the um, uh, Marion McPartland, who you know, had a house in Merrick, Long Island, which was a town over from uh, the one town over from, from where I live, which is in Belmore. And I actually called her on the telephone. And I said, Listen, I'm, I'm, I, I'm a I'm a, well, I'm a classical piano student, but I really want to learn how to play jazz. And, and, and she said, sure, come in. Uh, by then she had moved back to the city and then I would take the, the Long Island Railroad in, uh, you know, and go to an apartment on 86th Street. And we had a great time. We, we became very close. I loved Mary. I loved her. And we, 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 um, we, we had a great time learning how to play jazz. I met Bill Evans through her, wow. uh, which was the, maybe the biggest thrill I've had uh, you know, <laughs> in music. And um, uh, that, was, that was fun. And um, I really enjoyed it. I played club dates. I made money playing, you know, playing, uh, playing in um, um, places where I wasn't really supposed to be playing because I was too young. Um, but, um, it, it was great, but then I realized, you know, it's like, I was good. I was good at jazz, but I was good. And if I was really going to be pursuing music, um, it was very nice to flirt with the jazz, but, uh, where I really had something to say was in playing. Right. Right. Did, I'm curious, does your experience, exposure, love of jazz, did that in any way influence your style of playing or your approach to playing classical music? Not per se, um, but one thing it did do for me was it kind of freed up my rhythm. And um, another thing, I, I, I mean, I don't mean to keep running down poor Mr. Gordonitsky, but one of the things that was so harmful, I thought about playing for him was his kind of strict adherence to the bar line. And it was very um, um, kind of constricting. And I, again, through jazz, I sort of began to see music as kind of in light of uh, like poetry. It has rhythm, but you know, you, you, you kind of, rhythm has to sort of be in constant uh, not sloppy, not, 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 he do whatever you want, but it has to have, breathe. It has to have this kind of, um, uh, breath and, and, um, 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 supple, a supple quality. 
And I think that is, is, a, is something that I value in music. And that I think happened when I listened to jazz and the drummers and the way the drummers would fill beats and, 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 and the kind of way that it wasn't, it wasn't boring. It was, it was, well, it was wonderful. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say, as a big fan of your playing, having heard you perform many times, both at, at Turn Hour and, and on your CDs, the, the way you described uh, that aspect of music making fits very well with one of the many things I love about your playing, that suppleness, that, that sense of a, of a broad view. And, the, and the, the word poetry is, you, you, you do at least play very poetically, and it's, it's always a pleasure. That's nice, Michael. I appreciate that. But yeah. I do try for a sort of spaciousness. With the kids at school, uh, in, the, in, the, in the advanced piano seminar that, that, that I have, um, we often, uh, <laughs> they probably, I know they think I'm insane, but, I, but we often read poetry. Because I think poetry <coughs> has so much um, uh, relevance, you know, to music. Because it's like um, it's 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 music with, with, with words, and and we we talk about what it's like, what it means to read a poem, hmm. and that it would be in like for you know you'd say, well, I don't know, think of one that comes to mind. Oh yeah, well you could say, whose woods these are? I think I know. His house is in the village, though. It, he shall not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. That's boring. Now you're taking these great words and you are accentuating the rhythm, but there's no breath to it, you see. So we talk about it and we kind of conduct while we say it, you know, um, you know, whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He shall not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. It's still rhythmic, you know. You yeah, can still, that... you can still conduct it, but yeah. but it's not it's not to the bar. Yeah, yeah, that's that to me is very very interesting. Yeah, well, I I know that you're a big fan of not only poetry but reading. You know, I've been to your home and there's books and magazines and. And and a lot of things everywhere. You're 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 a lover of many of the arts, I know, including visual. Um, I, I want to come back to your performing. Um, and I, I'd love to hear some of I know you performed in Europe, you were a part of a chamber ensemble there. Uh, you performed recitals around the country, uh, you performed with the Atlanta Symphony, you've had you know many concerts at the JCC and elsewhere. I, I'd love to hear your view on maybe some of your fondest memories as a performer. Um, and and what kind of repertoire you like playing? I know you alluded to that earlier, but if you speak to that a little bit, I'd love to hear what you, you know, your thoughts on that. Well, one of my fondest memories, I, I think, is doing the Beethoven cycle at at, at Turnhour. Hmm. That was that was really fun, you know. Um, we did them all. It was over three years, and um, I didn't know them all when we started. <laughs> Um, so it was a constant, uh, you know, sometimes a little bit of a mad, mad dash to get them, to get them learned. But, um, that was, that was great. Um, I, I, I thank you and, and Dorothy for that, of course, for the opportunity. And it was fun. And as, as we were, rec uh, performing them, I would perform them, then I would record them, you know, at the, at the same time. And, and the ones that, the ones I had just performed, that was great. Um, my performances with Barbara, of course, Barbara Mello have been, um, oh God, I love playing with her. Um, <clears throat> she and I are true soulmates, uh, musical soulmates. And that was a, uh, moving to Leonia, the greatest thing was meeting Barbara. And, and we've, we've played so many great concerts with Barbara and I love playing with my wife. Deanna, because I love the way she plays the clarinet. It's just, it's just beautiful. And um, those are great memories. I had some great performances with some wonderful orchestras, the Atlanta Symphony, um, Baltimore Chamber Orchestra, American Symphony. Um, 
in Germany, there were orchestras in Germany, the, the, the Southwest German Radio Orchestra, the Luxem in Luxembourg. I've never been, I've never played, you know, with the Berlin Philharmonic or the, the New York Philharmonic. I wasn't uh, on that A-list of, of, of concerto uh, pianists, but to tell you the truth, uh, the concerto repertoire doesn't interest me all that much. There's only a few of them I really actually like. <laughs> Um, I'm good. Which, which, which ones are those? If you, what's that? Which, which ones? Uh, the all the Mozarts, all the Beethovens, the the Schumann, the Broke Brahms, uh, kind of the Chopin concertos. The um, you're reaching the end of my interest. You know, yeah. it's like it's like I know many of them. I know I know I know about thirty concertos, but uh, which is nothing. Really, I know I know a guy in Germany, Michael Korskik, this wonderful pianist. He he knows a hundred and nine concertos. <laughs> I, said, I said to him when I found that, I said, Michael, I can't even name a hundred and nine concertos, you know. And then he said to me, in a typical German fashion, he said, "And you know that does not even include the Chopin F minor." <laughs> And you know, 109 concertos without knowing the Chopin minor. But it was, it was, it, it, but you know, that. Yeah. And, and ha, you know, one thing that and, and other people have commented on, on as well, you reach this depth. You People have commented on the depth of your artistry, uh, you know, the, the, the breadth and the depth of your playing. And I'm wondering how you think of, of how your playing has changed and developed over the years, especially say the past well, 10. I really can't talk about the depth of my art. I mean, I don't know that it has any particular depth. Well, how has it changed over the time? I mean, all I can say is that, um, I, I mean, I, it sounds kind of uh, corny, you know, um, uh, it's all love. Everything is motivated by love, you know. Love the music, you know. You, you play it, and um, and to recognize that that there's music and there's music, you know. I mean, um, that if you d don't recognize that there's something very very special about late Beethoven, then there's something wrong. Or it, well, there may not even be anything wrong. You just shouldn't play, be playing that stuff, you know. Uh, Schubert, it's it goes beyond words. Well, that's the thing about music, right? It's beyond the power of words to express. Right. But um, some music is just. I hear. I, I mean, I don't know if I'm getting myself in trouble, but I hear God in that music. You know that that is where to me, the most spiritual experience. Of, of, right, right. Uh, I could say as listeners that come through, just that come through the audio. The, the, um, since you've brought up Schubert, uh, uh, I know you're going to be recording, you're in the process of recording Schubert, but I'd like to hear, it's done. I did. you're, you're going to be performing some Schubert next Thursday at, at in the Eric Brown Theater at the JCC. Could you tell us about the program you're going to be performing? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's um, three Schubert pieces. Um, the late uh, Klavierstücke, called Klavierstücke. Um, uh, they're they're basically impromptus. You know, they're they're written in the form as a form of impromptus, and and um, again, they're from his very late late period. Um, now, you know, when you're talking about Schubert, when you're talking about the late periods. He was 30 years old, <laughs> maybe when he wrote them, 30, 31 years old, you know? And so it's it's kind of hard to kind of, it's hard to fathom um, uh, a man of that age having that kind of wisdom, you know? That kind of, um, well, depth, you know, to write write these these three pieces. Now, the they're all different. The first one is kind of dark, stormy. The second one is a, it does what Schubert does so well. It's a, it's kind of basically a song without words, and then there's a kind of lighthearted second one, which has a, a a a kind of heartbreakingly beautiful middle section. It's uh, 
Yeah. 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 On the second half, right? Yeah. These aren't played all that much, so I'm very happy to be doing it. Uh-huh. And then Chopin B minor sonata, right? And um, then the, the second half is the Chopin B minor sonata, um, which has been a, uh, it's my favorite Chopin piece uh, ever. And, 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 and it speaks to how strange I, I think I am sometimes is I've loved this piece my whole life and never, ever, never learned it. Uh, that's typical. You know, I, I don't know why I never learned it. Maybe thinking, oh, you know, everybody plays that piece. And, and this is my first time ever playing it. Mm. So um, um, it's a piece that means quite a lot to me, but not because I've played it a lot, only because I've dreamed about playing it my whole life. Wow, that's exciting. And, and the recordings you've done, I know you you did the Beethoven cycle and you had a Brahms recording and now you have a Schubert recording coming up. They were all with Joe Patrish recording, right? As the engineer? Joe, Joe, Joe recorded them all, right? Yeah. And what will you what's the, on the next recording? What's on what's, <laughs> what's on the Schubert recording you're coming that, that's coming up? What's on it? Yeah. The, B, the, B, the B flat sonata, the great B flat sonata, the late the late sonata. I'm actually supposed to do the the all of the late sonatas by Schubert. Um, but I got kind of sidetracked with these three pieces and added that those, and I don't know if I'm going to carry it through to do all the late sonatas or not. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of to me, but yeah. But I, I, I one in any case, it, it may be the last one, but it, but you know, it'll, it'll be volume one. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to shift gears now and. As a teacher, you know, I, you know, how did you get involved in teaching? How did you come to turn hour? Um, and, you know, your approach to teaching. Could you speak to that a bit, please? Dorothy, what's the name of that restaurant on the, on the west side, that Italian restaurant? Um, we, Dorothy and I came across each other after years and years. Yeah, it was Carmine's. Carmine's, right. <laughs> we were there at a party, I think, for Rosetta. Yes, Rosetta good kind and 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 I saw Dorothy and um, I knew Dorothy from years because of um, I, I used to uh, play with her her daughter Karen not Sharon but Karen who was, who was really a very fine violinist also when she was young and she has gone on to great to many great things uh, in in literature and women's studies and teaches at Yale uh, but we, uh, Dorothy and I were talking and basically that's when it started. She invited me to come to teach in this new school she, she was starting and I was very interested and came out and um, I taught for a few years. Then I left and then I came back and um, you know, and that's it. Basically, uh, Dorothy is responsible, and and um, um, I got to. I wasn't all that good a teacher at the beginning, to tell you the truth. You know, I was a little bit of a of of of, of, of uh, you know pianist in teacher's clothing. Um, I don't think that that I think I learned a lot. I learned a lot from Dorothy, to tell you the truth. Um, about how to approach teaching. And, and then eventually over the years, I started to really love it. So I got very comfortable in the fact that I wasn't doing this because, um, you know, the playing career didn't work out or whatever, you know. Uh, no, I did it because I, I actually really love the kids, you know. I love, I love, I, I, I like the job, I like the school. You know, that's nice to hear. Yeah. Um, and it's nice, and interesting how the word love has come up several times. Uh, you well, know, the thing about it is when you first teach, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure that you're looking at these people necessarily as human beings, you know, these little kids. They're kind of like science projects, you know, see what you could get at, you know, and then and do sort of developing your technique. But then after a while, it became, I realized, you know, I really like these kids, and 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 then I was Mr. Massey, you know. I, I, this is a different thing, you know. 
and 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 um I complain, you know, I mean, I, 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 I do complain because, you know, the hours are long, I come home, I'm tired, it's throwing yourself into it, but I, I really do love the school, I like it. Well, it it's been uh, fun to watch you in action, especially with, you know, certain young children where you're quite entertaining and fun and funny, and at the same time, it's been a pleasure to watch you take some students to very high levels uh, in their advanced playing. Yeah, I mean, we have good students. We really have good, very good students. Yeah, can you talk about how you adapt your teaching or your teaching style depending on the student, if that's indeed true? It's, it's you know, I'm not even sure I have a teaching style. I'm so all over the place. It doesn't even, it's not even funny. I'm, I'm like a, um, um, I, it's like mo really literally actually moment to moment, you know, moment to moment. And I think in a certain way for the little ones, you know, I mentioned Mr. Rogers before, but I am not kidding for the lit I did spend hours looking at Fred Rogers, you know, Mr. <laughs> Rogers, I did. And I noticed the same thing with Dorothy, you know, she spoke in a very, it no, never got a very excited, you know, she speaks in a very measured way to the kids. It's very respectful, you know? And um, I was very bad at that. And I thought it was really good to, you know, show enthusiasm, but I realized at, at early on that the kids don't, they didn't respond to that so much because it, it sounded almost like a, too aggressive. They was like, you know, <laughs> this guy, he's too big, you know? And, and it's kind of like, you know, you have to dial that down a little bit and treat them with respect and treat them like you, like, um, you know, they're not all great talents. We're not all great talent, you know, but, but the thing about it is kids who are in it, you realize, you know, they're not there to become great pianists, but they're there to love music. And that's your job. It's like, you know, spread the love, you know? And, 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 and in a way, you gotta be a little bit of a Pied Piper, you know, for music. You put that trail out there and you say, well, I know, you know, we're not all gonna be pianists, but it's nice to, to understand what it takes to, um, what it takes to really do something beautifully, mm. not perfectly, but beautifully. Right, right. We're not going to be perfect. We're going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Be beautiful. Mm -hmm. And 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 that is well. I don't know. I hope that comes across. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, scales. You know. Why do you like scales? I I always try to say. Well, nothing will work. If it sounds like a duty, even scales, you have to be kind of romantic about it in a way. It's got to have right, a story. Right. It's got to be like, well, why do we do them? We're, well, you know, we're like, you know, we're just following, we're, we're, we're just like, like Mozart and like Beethoven, you know, they play their scales. This is a, a beautiful thing. We're virtuosos. The word of, the word of virtuoso has virtuous in it. We're true to what we do. We, we 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 play them, and then to try to get that sort of thing where um, you are making it kind of a, you know, giving it a kind of a romance in a way. I I don't mean like you know Hollywood romance. I'm talking about a story, and and of course you know I mean I I, I wish I were more consistent <laughs> about that. As every once in a while you know you have to you you're going to eventually break down into. Can't you just learn the fingering? <laughs> that's gonna happen. <laughs> but I think that's part of it too, you know? You're a human being also, right? Right, right. Now, in correct me if I'm wrong, but did you teach Bill Turnauer at some point years ago? Who? Bill Turnauer. Did you teach Bill Turnauer? I Turnauer? did teach Bill Turnauer. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Bill was, was fun to teach. Because yeah. Bill really couldn't play. Right. And, 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 and he'd tackle 
the, the, the I mean, it's not that he couldn't play. He he played okay, you know, but he would tackle really difficult things. Mm. So, you know, it'd be like um, putting it together. And, and every once in a while, he'd look at me and he'd say, that was really terrible, wasn't it? I said, Bill, you know what? If you're on the stage of Carnegie Hall, yeah, it's terrible. But it's fantastic to hear you doing this. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. I like Bill Turnout. He was a he was a nice man. Oh, very, very nice. I remember once uh, you know, he was playing some piece by Schubert and he was pretty close to 90 or maybe over 90. And uh you know, he played it slowly, but he played it. And I, I, I remember feeling like he had a, a depth of knowledge about the music that came through, even if the technique wasn't so impressive. But he also won a concert. He played with love, you know. Yeah, he played with love. And there was one concert where he accompanied like a five-year-old violinist. Um, I think it was Aton Goldstrom. It was really beautiful. It was really cute um, way, way back. And um but it was he. He really was a a, a great person, and uh, one of my personal uh, highlights of being a turnhour was getting to know him. So I'm curious. I met Bill and Maria, um, but years before I had I was playing a house concert somewhere in preparation for something something, and the house concert, and there was this woman in the, in the front row with these sparkly eyes. I don't know if you remember, Maria had these beautiful blue eyes, you know, they were, but they, they were sparkly, you know, they were live, you know, and I thought, I kept thinking to myself, who, who is that person? She, I gotta get to know that woman, you know, she's, she's so sparkly, you know, and it was Maria. And uh, so I actually knew them even before I went to the school. That's nice. I actually met them too, before I came to the school, because they were taking photos up at Marlboro, in 1991, when I was working there, before I came to turn hour, um, one or two, a few, a few other questions. Um, his birthday concert. Remember his birthday concert? Yes, yes, his 90. That was great. I, I played something. I think I played some Schubert piece there. Oh, yes. I know. I played a, a piece that Bill had been working on all those years, right? Uh huh. And 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 um, 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 somebody came up to me after the and then and then I played this thing, Happy Birthday to Bill. Yeah, it was in the style of Beethoven or something. It was it was written by um, uh, what was his name? Rosadoff. No, the guy used to play with Victor Borga. I don't know. Oh God, um, this pianist, um, Leonid Hambro. Leonid Hambro wrote okay. this thing. So there was a man at the at at, at that concert. That I, 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 after the concert, he came up to me and he said, Oh, Mr. Hambro, it's so good to see you again. Now, Leonid Hambro, you know, was a very old man. Uh, and, and I, this is, you know, what, 30, 30 years ago, maybe I wasn't all that old. So I said, I said, No, 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 I'm not Leonid Hambro. I, I just, I, I just played something by Leonid Hambro. And he said, oh, surely you must remember when we met, he had one of these old confession, you know, accents. He said, surely you must remember um, when we met, we said, Music Mountain, you played with Marian Anderson. And I said, well, no, no, again, it wasn't me. I, I, I am not Leonid Hambro. Um, <laughs> it was just, Unbelievable. So he went, he would not take no for an answer till finally he said, surely you must remember. And then I said, oh, yes, I remember. It was after Marian Anderson's concert at Music Mountain. And he said, yes, that's right. It's so good to see you again. Very nice. Yeah. Well, well done. Well, um, apart from your Beethoven cycle, um, do you have any other particularly fond memories of your time at Turnhour? Because you've, you've been been at the school for quite a while, and at like, Turnhour, yeah. there's a ton of them. There were, even Lolita's concert, the last last uh, last week, was yeah. a tribute to L Lolita. Mayadas was great. It is many, many, um, many times there was our our Brahms series with um, the clarinet trio with um, uh, me, Barbara, and Deanna, and um, I don't know. Am I? Am I? I really. I don't. Really, I may be forgetting something that's very dear. We have something exciting coming up next Tuesday. Could you tell us about the 
Tuesday, yes. Next week, next week. Tell us about that, please. Yeah, that, that's great. It's my students in the in the piano seminar, the advanced piano seminar, are all playing. Uh, there, there is, uh, there'll be, um, I think there are six of them. They're splitting it up, but they're playing, we're performing all the Chopin preludes, all of the Opus 28 uh, uh, Chopin preludes. Uh, which is um, actually a, 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 an immense achievement. It's a great thing. I think it's going to be unique in our in our school's history um, to, to to present such a monumental work. And uh, we've been working on it all year. You know, studying uh, Chopin and his love of Bach and um, the fact that the only when he went to Mallorca. Uh, and where he composed the preludes, the only music he took with him was the Gualtembri Clavier and the influence of Bach on Chopin and the, the counterpoint. And we've been covering all that stuff. And then finally on Tuesday, they're going to be, you know, playing one after the other, uh, all of the all of the preludes. It's going to be very exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm looking forward to that too. I, I mean, I think feel like in a eight day period, you have three big things at the school separate from all of your teaching. You have tonight, we have next Tuesday, and we have next Thursday, and it's uh, it's always a pleasure to see the many sides of you and your teaching. Um, we, in a minute or two, we're going to open it up for for viewers or, or other people on the Zoom to ask some questions. But I'd be remiss if I didn't, uh, I thought I'd touch a little bit upon some of your non-musical interests. So you've talked about poetry and reading, but, um, you know, if you'd like to say about, I have a few photos to share if you want, but uh, would you like to talk about a few of your other things that you like to do when you're not playing music or teaching I music? Like, I, I like baseball. Basically, baseball is a, um, it's my, um, uh, I love baseball. You, you you were a serious baseball player yourself, I was a right? Baseball player, yes. And I was actually scouted by a major league baseball team. I was offered uh, a minor league contract by the St. Louis Cardinals, and my son is a really great baseball player. Mm -hmm. Eden the other night hit a ball, the longest ball I think, uh, uh, reputedly the longest ball ever hit in Leonia. Wow. Yeah, it went it went over three three hundred eighty five feet. Amazing. Yeah. Well, here, here's a here's a photo of, of you and your son, um, and leads us to another one of your interests. Oh, there uh, he is. <laughs> yeah, but but look oh, what you tell us what you're holding there. Yeah. Now that that shirt he's wearing is actually means that it's a double play. Six plus plus four three equals two outs. Ah, I see. Baseball stuff. Yeah. But is that a homemade pizza there, Stephen? Yeah, that's a pizza, homemade pizza, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I can attest to your being a very- Pizza every Saturday night, we make it outdoor, we have an outdoor pizza oven, so- Oh, how nice, yeah, we get, I've, I've benefited as I think a few other people on this call have from your your fine skills in the kitchen. I mean, I, you're I an artist. Cooking. I love cooking too, yeah. I think you told me you spent some time in Italy and, and learned from a, an old Italian woman or something like that? Yeah, from a, a woman who had a, a, a trattoria in Bologna, let me work in her kitchen. And um, I knew um, she taught me how to, you know, roll pasta, the correct way of making risotto. This nope. is, oh, look at that guy. <laughs> there's another, there's another image. Teeth. You, you love, uh, you love cycling too, right? I love bicycling, yes. I'm not like, I'm not in the league of my wife. My wife is a world-class <coughs> bicyclist, but, uh -huh. um, so, but I love it. I love, there's me in my uh, Italia t uh, uh, jersey. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you, you go on, you go on some fairly long rides. I know Shoko Suzuki's on, on with us and she's also a cyclist. Oh, hi Shoko, how are so, you? So, um, you know, I think we've covered a lot of the things I wanted to talk about. So I want to give other people a chance to either put their questions into the chat or uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. We have some great people on the call, and I think you should be able to unmute yourself. If not, um, put something in the chat. Dorothy seems unmuted and ready to say something. Well, I, I, I just want to say that um, Steve is really an extraordinary teacher. Um, from the 
most advanced to the beginner. And that's unusual because most um, teachers have specialties, um, but Steve's specialty is really um, bringing the world of music to every child, no matter what their level of talent or what their level of commitment is, he gets them excited. And um, it, it's just been wonderful to, to see how Steve has changed and developed over the years as a teacher. And um, I, I treasure it. So thank, thank you so much. Well, I really appreciate that. Coming from you, I mean, you know, you're the greatest teacher. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's been a long journey, let me tell you. And Shoko, it's wonderful to see you. Yeah, Shoko. <laughs> Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> this is oh my God, yeah. there's that young man who played the Beethoven. Yeah, <laughs> this is my favorite CD. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember uh, when I was there in a musicianship class, um, you know, the students act like, Oh my God, like we are, we are next is Mr. Mashi. Like next is Mr. Mashi, like how serious they are. And then they all act like Mr. Mashi said this. Oh, did you hear Mr. Mashi said that? So I had to ask children like, is he very mean or, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I, I start to realize like you know you you have so much passion and they understand how serious you are. And then I am so impressed, like you know, every one of them took like so seriously, and then I asked them like is he so mean? And then he said, No, 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 no. I had to practice, I have to practice, you know. So that kind of love they know you love them so much and at the same time they feel commitment and then that, that's such a beautiful relationship i'm so impressed thank you thank you shoko uh we have a few of the parents of your students on um not to put anybody in the spot but if you'd like to um, unmute yourself and maybe give us the, that perspective of the parent of a, of a student of Mr. Massey's. Or not. No, you don't have to. But if you'd like to, we, we welcome them. And your old friend Gordon Clapp is on. Gordon, would you like to say a few words? Who? Gordon. <laughs> well, it says, it says that Gordon is on, but maybe he stepped away for a minute. Um, uh, so Sujin, did you like to say something? Uh, there he is. Hi, hi. Oh my goodness. Uh, how are you? <laughs> All right, we see feedback. Yeah. Oh, is it like that from me? Oh, you know, I, another person I want to mention is Dan. Uh. I want to thank Dan also, because Dan is great. Dan Jatowski, you're talking Dan about. That school, we, 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 we love Dan. And one of my other um, very, very big interests is movies. Well, you know, being, of course, my musical career having started in the movies and uh, I kind of grew up with, 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 with the movies, you know, and, 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 and the great movie stars and, Cary Grant and Fred Astaire and all these, all these folks. And I think I know a lot about movies, but it's not a patch on what Dan Jatowski knows. That guy is, he knows movies. So we, um, we have a lot of fun in the office talking about movies and he listens to me pontificate and he's always very nice about it. <laughs> We agree, Dan. I see where Dan is. Dan is a treasure for the school. 
Asujan, were you going to say something? Oh, <laughs> oh well, I mean, I struggle with, uh, with Evan at home, not listening to me, of course, and he doesn't want me to tell him what to do. And <laughs> so I have a lot of, uh, uh, I'll say, moments with him. And then when I go and we go to a lesson with Mr. Masi and you know, it's not for him. It's not about technique. It's about music. So he actually teaches Evan music, not just technique. And that I appreciate so much as a parent sitting there and you know, Evan actually learning to play the music, not just the notes. So I just want to make note of that for sure. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Um, Barbara, would you like to say, say anything? I know that you're a big fan of Stephen's playing. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, though. Can you unmute, Barbara? Barbara's mic is off. Yes. There we go. She's good. Okay. Hello. I've loved hearing everything that you've said and your history and your early years, Steve. And, and all I can say is playing with Steve is we don't have to talk, do we? No. We play together. We understand the music the same way. And it is such a joy because sometimes rehearsals can be mostly talking and it's marvelous just to make the music and we kind of know what each other is feeling. Is, isn't that true, Steve? Yes, I think that is very true. The, the amount of words, is very, it's minimal actually, right? We just play. That's right. We may discuss the tempo, yeah. but as far as interpretation, very, very similar. Yeah. A joy, always a joy, Steve. Yes. It's like uh, it fits hand in glove, right? That's right. That's right. Thank you, Steve, for being you. Thank you. <laughs> for those who, for those who don't know the wonderful Barbara Mallow, she's a terrific cellist and a terrific teacher and a terrific person, all three in one. So. And uh, another one of my pleasures of having been a turn hour all these years has been getting to know and to hear Barbara uh, play. Uh, Stephen, we have um, the, the Kumars family had a little bit of a audio problem, but right? Or if you- There's a I hear that, that Sandia had just put a- um, Yeah, do you want to do it? Yeah, because there's, there's a really bad echo when I turn my Zoom on and then oh. talk. So I just typed it. Okay. So, yeah, just so it doesn't vibrate. I'll read it. I'll read it out loud. Yeah. Um, um, what Shoko said really resonates for me. In the Indian tradition, we call a teacher a guru. And the idea is that they teach us both about the content, music, and about life. As a parent, I see that from week to week. I have started writing down Mr. Mazzy lessons on my notes app on my phone from Rita. And sometimes I read them back to her at random times. It's nice. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. That's awfully nice. Thank you, son. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stephen, is there anything you want to add that maybe I didn't ask you about that you'd like to touch on or? Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Um, um, you know. I, I've been running off at the mouth, <laughs> um, but I, I do, um, I do, it's funny, you know, the, the, um, the older I get, <clears throat> the more pianists I kind of like, you know, um, and sometimes I find myself doing this thing. Do you know who Gregory Sokolov is? Does anybody know that name? I've heard his name, but I don't know. Phenomenal pian. He's a phenomenal pianist. I think he's a little older than I am, but he's so great that every once in a while, I think my lessons, my investment lessons for the advanced students could be just saying, you know, just go listen to Sokolov, play it, and that'll that's enough. You know, just do it like that. I I just love, it. and there's so many people that the more you play, the more you get to realize just how great these people are, you know, that it is, it is, I, I mean, playing the piano, it's such a wonderful thing, but to be able to function at that level in front of so many people all the time 
you know, night after night is a very special gift, you know. Now, I do like, love performing. I'm not the kind of person I don't, I don't think, I don't depend on, on that, you know, for my existence. I, it's like, I just get me in front of an audience type of, 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 of musician. I just like it because I like it, you know. I just like, to, I enjoy practicing. I like practicing, you know, in, in a way more than I like playing because I enjoy process. The, you know, the applause, the bowing always makes me a little uncomfortable. But I, I do realize now, you know, more than ever that, that it's a really great thing to be able to do. Every sometimes I think, you know, well, God, if there's reincarnation, please, I don't want to be, I don't want to come back as anything other than a pianist, you know? I just like playing. I like being a pianist. And um, the more I, I, you know, during the pandemic, I went through a period of time, there was months that I didn't practice, months. And I was, you know, riding my bike a lot and, you know, having fun. And I, and I, and I started to think, wow, you know, I'm really enjoying this. Maybe I don't want to play anymore. Maybe, maybe I should like open a restaurant or something, you know, and yeah, <laughs> then go from one horrible way to make a living to another. But, but, you know, the, maybe it just, not maybe I've got maybe I've lost it you know maybe I don't really like it anymore all that much you know and then it just came flooding back um and in a weird way it was Chopin again like it does it's it's kind of a, a, a now from the other direction I haven't been playing Chopin for years then one day we were there De De Deanna and I were Joe's um, I had been recording something and uh, some Schubert, I think. And I, they were talking out, out in the um, control room and I sat down and started playing the Chopin Versus. And uh, I didn't know Joe was recording it, you know. So they said, so I just walked into the, um, I finished and walked into the, the, the control room and he looked at me and said, why are you such an idiot? And I said, well, thanks, Joe. I, I don't know. I haven't really asked myself that question. He said, why aren't you doing a recording? Why aren't you playing more Chopin? Your Chopin playing is wonderful. And, 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 you know, I started doing that. And then it just started coming, flooding back to me. You know, how- So play it. Doing this. So play it. What? So play it. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to, I, I am. And, but not only, you know, and, and again, it's not just Chopin, it's everything. Now I'm, <laughs> I've got this, it's, I'm back, you know, I, I'm loving it again, very much. I just, I just, just love it. Well, I'm going on and on, so. That's, that's your friend Gordon was telling you to play it, so. We get to hear you next Thursday oh, night. Gordon, you know, I, I, I can't hear. There he is. There he is. Hey. What? Hello. <laughs> Do you know Gordon? He's a great Oh. Actor. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you could be with us, Gordon. Well, <laughs> He's up in Vermont. Well, S Stephen, Stephen, I think uh, those are beautiful words about and about coming full circle with your Chopin from, you know, age seven to whatever age you are now and, and how Chopin has continued to inspire you. That's a wonderful thing. And yeah, I hope I, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing you play Chopin next week. Um, well, I think what we, we could sort of bring the official uh, turn our talk to a close, but, but keep the lines open for anybody who just wants to chat with Mr. Massey. But I want to thank you, Stephen, on behalf of the school for your time, your generosity, for being part of our community. Dorothy, do you want to add, add anything in closing? Well, I'm um, president 
of the Steve Massey fan club. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julia. And it's just been uh, really wonderful to uh, sit and talk with you and hear all of the wonderful things that are part of your life and how you've moved from one thing to another. So we, we are very grateful and um, look forward to at least another hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> That would be great, wouldn't it? To live to yes. 170. <laughs> They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. <laughs> so, so there's, um, anyhow, people are welcome to stay on and chat with Stephen. And um, so it's up to you guys. But uh, thank you again, Stephen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Bye. 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 Are we done now? We're done, but you can stay in chat with your friends if you want. It's up to anyone. Anyone wants to stay along and maybe and say whatever they wish. Say they may. <laughs> I'm gonna see you in a couple of days. I'm I'm sorry if I disrupted the procedure. Not at all. Not at all. You are, you 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 are always welcome, Gordon. Gordon, my well, own. thank you. Cheers. I'm one of your earliest fans. Yes. <laughs> Gordon. You know, I have to say something. Um, do you know? Um, Gordon, I, I love Gordon. Um, Gordon, is, we've had so much fun together. As a matter of fact, we coined the phrase pure fun. Um, and uh, I won't go into what that actually is. <laughs> but uh, and, and, and Gordon, Gordon's um, dearly departed uh, first wife, um, Gail, um, is one of our, one of my, um, I'm, I'm going to, I'd like to uh, dedicate that Schubert recording to her um, because when we, when we were kids, she just loved Schubert. And we were talking the other day about this um, on the phone and, and, and realizing that, um, that people may not get the reference anymore, but this is like in the 1970s, when I don't know if you all remember that that program. Remember the Fonz, the that that program on TV, Happy Days. Happy right? Days, yeah. And the oh, Fonz. Yeah. The Fonz was a big thing. She used to call Schubert the Franz. <laughs> <laughs> the Franz. <laughs> but um, that's what I think of when I think of Schubert. I think of Gail. <laughs> But um, you know, we've been we've been we've had a long long ro road together, uh, Gordon. Gordon, <laughs> Gordon, do you have any do you have any stories about Stephen as a young musician or a young person that that are okay to share? Well, Stephen Stephen played. Uh, well, he was the accompanist at the summer stock, uh, where I um, uh, did what some people might call musical theater. Um, <laughs> Well, it was musical theater, but what I was not a, a musical theater. Um, <laughs> I was challenged in musical <laughs> theater. I was challenged, but I would have I I I would find every way I could to um, to crack Stephen up while he was playing, while he was accompanying whatever. I was I would I would change lines uh, with references. And uh, we were bad boys in that in that regard. We weren't we weren't true artists. No. Uh, but that, then, but we are. But I believe we are now. I believe we've grown into it. I believe we are. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I remember one night uh, you appearing in a goalie uh, in a hockey uniform and dressed as a goalie in, in off stage. I don't remember that, but yes, I, I I remember that we were doing <laughs> Beyond the Fringe, and and, and yes, right. <laughs> I was was doing that Beethoven thing, that 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 Beethoven um, parody thing, which was right, which immortalized, which well, the, 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 the Colonel Beethoven. Colonel Bogey march that that was the, the Colonel Bogey, right? It was right. Da -da, it was referred da -da, to as the Beethoven. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Right. And I had to listen to that record that record for hours, <laughs> kind of um, you know, transcribe, get it off the record, and and play it. Yeah. That was my that was my contribution. I was being Dudley Moore. 
um, I don't know if these names mean anything except Dan, of course. Then, I was just listening to that the other day. It's on YouTube. Yeah. And it's been in my head ever since. <laughs> I did, and 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 then it got it got more and more and more elaborate uh, as as nights went on. But you played you played the 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 Waldstein sonata at at um, um, during the, for uh, Charlie Brown, right? Oh, that's right, exactly. Um, that we, was... we were we were we were um, yeah. Well, irreverent at the, is 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 the is the good word to describe it. I think. Well, I'm sorry I missed the beginning of this, um, uh, but I'm happy to say that my son is here from, uh, he's flown in from Boulder. Oh, hi, Bill. Uh, for the weekend. So um, you're going to see, you're going to see Billy on Saturday. Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. I'm going up to New Hampshire. Um, oh, oh, Gordon, I can say uh, that, that we recorded this. But you can... Gordon is recently um, deceased brother, a dear, dear friend. Um, so we're going to spend some time together. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we'll catch up. Yeah. So we are, we're, we're, yes, we will, we will catch up. Although we speak to each other on the phone, on, uh, weekly, I would say, is that right? Yes. I call it, um, it's, if it's Tuesday, it's Stephen's lament on baseball. Yeah. Uh, on the uh, the runner on second to begin the tenth inning. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, if it's Friday, it's Stephen's lament on the number of mound visits that are allowed now, and uh, yeah, and the number of strikeouts, and the number of strikeouts and home runs. Today was a major. Uh, I was actually screaming into the telephone. It was it was great. It was <laughs> therapeutic. Screaming into the telephone about the about about um, oh about pitchers who can't pitch nine innings anymore. <laughs> right. Yes. No, there's no. Uh... Oh, I'm a total. You know, and that's when you realize you're an old man. The amount of money per inning now that is doled out by these owners to the to the, yeah. to the pitchers is just staggering, staggering, staggering. No, I want to I want to be I want to share a quick photo just because it's it's fun to share. This is uh, oh look at look at this look at the fun we're having. Diana, wow! Look at Barbara. <laughs> She's in there. Those two. <laughs> Was that the Mozart? What were you playing? Brahms. Playing, oh no, the Brahms. The Brahms. Brahms trio. That's a nice picture. It is. It was actually just a screenshot from the video. So it's. I've, I've slimmed down a little since those days. Yes, you have. You you have indeed. Right. Oh, anybody else? Uh, I I can make you co-host, Stephen. You can stay on and chat at your. Well, at no, your... I'm good. I'm. I think. I think I'm getting tired. Um, I'm, I need to um, rest, rest my voice. <laughs> and good night to you all. And thank you for, uh, thank you all for including me and inviting me. Good night. Wonderful evening. Wonderful. I'm glad you could be with us, Barbara. Mike, thank you very much. You're a good man. Thank you. We have to give a nice applause to Michael Ryan. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. My pleasure. Can we see Debbie before we would go? Kwisa, how does that? Debbie's right here. It's, 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 it must be nine o'clock because he's looking. Let me let me see Zebby before we go. Debbie, right, come Michael. here, Zebby. Come here, Michael. Say hi to Michael. Yeah, say goodbye to Michael. Oh, there's my Zebby. <laughs> he's got food on his mind now. I miss Zebby. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah Zebby. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night, good night.